Kitty X Plus 3 is fully enclosed to the printer with all metal frame. The printed chamber is temperature controlled. Printer volume is on the bigm size 280 by 280 by 270 mm. The bed plate is double sided flexible HF plate which has good adhesion as advertised and it's easy to remove the prints when you let it cool down the bed before you remove prints. Hot bed max temp is up to 120 degrees. There are also new cooling to reduce clogging risk and high grade hardness steel linear hollow optical axis. So rail should be highly durable and no need for frequent maintenance. X plus 3 has a clipper firmware which helps to reach up to 600 mm per second printing speed. X plus 3 comes with two hot ends, one copper alloy nozzle and hardened steel nozzle. Both can handle them up to 350 degrees. There are handles which make smoothing this big and heavy printer easy. X plus 3 also has filament drying box spool holder with the desiccant bag slot. I think it's not good for drying filaments, but it will keep air inside the box dryer and filament don't absorb more moisture. Inside the printer is extra cooling fan, similar to other fast speed printers like K1 or Bamboo Lab X1. The door at first made annoying sound, but after some opening and closing it went away. This printer also has a automatic leveling, which is a common on nowadays printers. X plus 3 comes with calibration card to set the C height. After that the probe will measure distance at 16 points. Clipper advanced meshing and birching ensure for flawless first layer for every 3D print. After first auto leveling, printer will run input shaper, which will reduce ringing. Calibration can be done afterwards also if needed. During testing this printer I didn't need to do it again. Inside the box are four rubber feet, which are mentioned inside the quick start guide, either inside accessory list. It seems like feet are added later than first version, and that can explain why they don't want to stay on when lifting the printer. X plus 3 interface is simple and easy to use. On the home page is some info about the printer and option to turn lights and sound on off. Option to move axis manually and load your filament. You can print from the USB flash drive or connect it with PC through Wi-Fi or Ethernet cable. This printer has 800 watt power supply. During the preheat it takes about 400 watts and during the printing with all fans working around 200 to 240 watts. I measured the hot air bed. Temp, temp is set to 16 degrees. Measurements are not 100% accurate, but you can see differences in different points. Measurements are quite same, except that the one corner is temp to degrees lower. It's not a big deal, it should not have negative effect. There are some pre sliced models in the printer's memory. Before printer start printing, you can see the preview of the model, time, filament weight, length, and filament type. Also, you can uncheck bed leveling if you want. You should remove top cover when you print with PLA or TPU. During the printing, you can change the height, different temps, printing speed, fan speed, and even flow. Fast printing is good cooling and with that comes noise. When door closed and top lead off, it's around 15 decibels. When door is opened and top lead off, it's around 57 decibels. When door closed and top lead on, it's still around 15 decibels. It's a little bit less than other printers with same fast printing speeds I have used. This black PLA is the same one which came with the printer. 3D printing took 17 minutes as it was written in the bare view before printing. The quality is very good and it printed fast. It's even better than my other printers, which can print it much slower. Next thing I printed was also from the printer memory. It printed mostly fine, but at the top of the print, under extrusion happened. I tried other print and after some layer of filament stopped extruding. Then I checked the filament holder dryer if there are tangled filament on the spool, but there was big mess inside the dryer. Filament was unwind from the spool and it was stuck so extruder can't pull the filament. I cleaned the mess and put the spool back inside the holder and tried to print something again. The problem was fixed and I didn't have the same problem again. Kitty has their own slicer, which is based on Prusa slicer. From the slicer you can start printing directly, which I used most of the time. I didn't saw anywhere info about power failure resume printing, so I got the power and tested if this worked. Sadly, it seems that this printer don't have power failure resume option, but X plus 3 have filament detection, so it could be resume printing when filament run out. I got the filament to see if this working or not. Sensor detected filament run out and post printing. 
To remove the filament piece inside the tube, you need to remove the bottom tube from the sensor outlet and pull it out. You don't need to remove both tubes from the sensor, I did it to cut the filament. And the printer is on printing with out errors. When I start pins directly from the slicer, it had black screen instead of model preview. I printed bed test, which is one layer and size is a max 280 by 280. Quality is not consistent. It's about 50% good. One good thing is that you can print all over the bed. Some printers can print smaller size than other dice. I printed one more print, which has large flat bottom, and the first layer was better than bed test print. So, auto leveling result can be different. Overall prints came out good. PLA 3D Benzi printed 70 minutes and quality is good as seen before in the video. Next one is printed with ABS filament that it came out very good. Even better than PLA but ABS one was printed slower. I didn't have any problems. Beta Dyson was very good, no warping or cracks on layer lines. PTG printed fine, little bit too much stringing but it can be removed shading sometimes and retraction settings. I printed these 3D benches with default settings. TPU isn't good. The filament holder, dryer and long bottom tube aren't good for printing flexible filaments. I tried another TPU filament, but still not good. Maybe a little bit better, but still have problems on the front. Kitty logo, pre-sliced model from the memory. This is the calibration cube when I tested filament sensor. You can see one filament piece when it resumed. It's a good result. This cube's dimension should be 20 by 20 by 20 millimeters, and when I measured it, I got almost the same dimension. Personal cube came out very good. The head plate gives nice texture to the bottom of your prints. Low poly rabbit came out also good. Nothing bad to say. I printed tolerance tests and knobs 0 0.4 to 0 0.2 moved, 0 0.50 mm needed some force to break it free, and 0 0.1 was stuck. This rocket is printed with waste mode. It broke when I touched it. Also, on the top is a little defect, but if we look at other parts of the print, it looks fine. Next one is stackable box, which I upscaled. It came out very good and it took to 12 hours to print. Size looks good, layers are consistent, and mesh looks smooth. The bridging on the top of the handle came out very good, it's quite long distance, and it handled it with no problems. Flexifactory Unicorn printed 3 hours and 16 minutes, which is fast and with that printing speed quality stays still good. I didn't have problems with the bed adhesion, and I can't see anything wrong with the print quality. My experience with this printer is positive. I like the fast printing speed, and it ca can maintain good printing quality. The bed adhesion is very good, even with more demanding filaments. Bed size is good, but overall printer size is quite big, and it took much room, and it's quite heavy. The rubber feet that want to fall down are annoying, but it's not a problem if you don't move your printer, or glue can also fix it. I don't see a good point of this filament holder dryer, but you can use printer without it also. I think this printer is more for advanced users and if you want to print more demanding filaments like ABS, carbon fiber and glass fiber filaments. If you have any questions comment below and I will try to answer them. Thanks for watching.